it's Lizzie. Today we're going to be talking about some dolls that might look magical and cute and they seem fun and innocent. However, little do we know, they had dark, twisted secret that not a lot of people would ever expect of such innocent looking little dolls. The tea is hot, ladies and gentlemen. Also guys, congratulations to today's shoutout winners. If you guys want to win a shoutout, just leave a nice comment down below and I'll be picking three winners for the next video. Let's just get into talking about these scary dolls. So, I'm assuming a lot of you guys have never heard of Cabbage Patch Kids before because, well, they came out a very long time ago. Even I haven't owned one of these, however, I know my mom had one when she was growing up and I think we ended up getting rid of it and that one would have been worth thousands of dollars at this point because a lot of Cabbage Patch Kids resell for a ton of money, so that's why you guys always want to keep your old toys because even the toys we have now can be worth a lot of money later on even though some of them are terrifying, but that's not the point. So, Cabbage Patch Kids were a line of a one-of-a-kind cloth doll with plastic heads first produced by Coleco Industries in 1982. One of the weird things about these dolls that actually keeps me up at night is that the company actually said that each of these dolls was all unique. So that means every single Cabbage Patch doll that was ever released was all unique in its own way, shape, or form, and no two Cabbage Patch dolls were ever exactly the same or identical. They had different molded eye shapes, colors of hair, hairstyles, and clothing options or outfits on each of the dolls. And each of these dolls actually came with a birth certificate special for that doll when you first get it. Just kind of like how you get a birth certificate at Build-A-Bear, which I'm sure we've all done. Also, one of the weird things that I found about these dolls is that on the left side of their butt cheeks, for some reason, yes, their butt cheeks, there is the signature of the actual creator of the doll who made them, and for some reason, they always have the signature on their booty cheeks. I don't know why. And every single year, they would change the color of that signature on these dolls' butt cheeks, which I think is a weird spot to put a signature, but I mean, you do you, Couch Patch Kid, I guess. <laughs> so they were inspired by 21-year-old art student Xavier Roberts, who ended up sculpting some really strange looking dolls in the 1800s. They were actually soft sculptures. And then he found many parents were happy to pay $40 adoption fees for one of his hand signed little peoples. So before Cabbage Patch dolls were called Cabbage Patch, they were called Little People instead of Cabbage Patch, which I find very interesting. What is even more interesting than the name Little People is actually the way that this guy was trying to sell the dolls to the markets and stores he was trying to put them into. And this part is extremely strange to me. So he he would actually go to the markets and stores interested in putting his dolls on the shelf and tell the people that nobody in the store that was selling them at all could ever refer to these dolls as an actual doll, even though they were dolls. He told them if they wanted to carry his product, aka his dolls, Cabbage Patch Kids, that they had to be referred to as a kid or a child, even though they were very evidently a doll. And he also mentioned how instead of saying selling them, it would be referred to as adopting them. So he kind of wanted the branding of kids to think that, hey, you know, instead of buying a doll, I'm buying a baby or a kid to play with and I'm adopting it so it feels more real for the kids. So no one was allowed to call them dolls or refer to it as a cell. It was adopting and a child. That was very interesting to me. <laughs> Since it wasn't your typical doll, there was a lot of commercials that were branded to making kids feel like these were really alive babies or children. Now there are even more ways to care for your Cabbage Patch Kids. There are soft quilted travel beds for kids on the go. So there was a lot of commercials where you'd see the Cabbage Patch dolls chilling by a pool, getting their hair cut, eating some food, to make them feel more lively than your typical plastic Barbie doll or other toy doll that you guys can get, which is kind of the whole marketing scheme of these dolls, like I said, to make them feel like you're actually adopting a real baby child. <laughs> Apparently that marketing scheme was extremely successful because around the first Christmas when these dolls were released, people got trampled and extremely injured trying to get their hands on one of these little Cabbage Patch dolls. For some reason, everybody just wanted them, even though they kind of looked terrifying. People would stand in long lines outside of stores that sold these dolls when they were first released in attempts to even get lucky enough to get their hands onto one of these dolls. It got so intense that people were trying to bribe the store owners and the workers of the stores to try to get a doll early enough before people started to line up in the large crowds outside of the stores in attempt to get one. Also, they only put them in limited batches and releases, so there was not so many for sale at once, once they were gone, they were out of there, and they were all unique. As soon as the store doors opened, people ran into the stores, pushing and shoving, trampling over crowds, just like on a Black Friday, all over the release of these Cabbage Patch dolls. Some people even got injured really badly with broken bones, getting trampled, getting pushed down staircases, and even beat up over a Cabbage Patch kid. One store actually got so out of hand that the owner of the store had to go outside with a literal baseball bat to try to maneuver people out of the way so they would stop fighting and trampling over each other over these dolls. So the next story about these dolls is actually super creepy. One specific model of a Cabbage Patch doll that was released actually ate a child's hair. 
Yes, you heard me. It ate their hair somehow. This model of a Cabbage Patch doll was called the Snack Time Kids model. These ones were designed to gobble fake food, and they had an animatronic robotic mouth that would somehow chew these toy foods that the doll came with. However, it started to chew up more than food, unfortunately. And it did not end well. It started chewing up children's hair. Kids would be playing with this doll and have their hair down, not realizing that the doll would be slowly eating up their hair and pulling it out of their heads while playing with it. There was actually even one 911 call about this doll eating a child's hair, and they couldn't even remove the doll from this kid's hair, so they had to call the cops. A small child in Connecticut who had been playing with this doll ended up getting her hair completely stuck inside of the animatronic robot's mouth, and the parents panicked because they couldn't get the doll off of their kid's head, so they ended up calling the cops. This model eventually had a very bad reputation out there since this was frequently happening with a lot of different children, and some kids were stupid enough to try to feed the doll their own hair, which of course never ended well. So Cabbage Patch dolls ended up having to pull a ton of those dolls off their shelves and giving refunds to a lot of very unhappy customers and parents. If you guys think that that's creepy enough, just wait until you hear the next thing. So you know how they come with birth certificates? Well, apparently some Cabbage Patch dolls end up coming with death certificates. Yes, you heard me. Death certificates for your doll. Like, is that not crazy or what? So as you guys know, a lot of toys over the years, no matter how long they're owned, eventually do break. They wear, they tear, they chip. Some of them break in half. You know, kids play wild with toys. They throw them around in the dirt, in the mud, and sometimes their arms and legs are ripped off. The most common thing that would happen to my toys when I was growing up is my dog would get a hold of it and destroy it, which is also another possibility. However, no matter how long you have a toy, eventually they all wear down. And so Cabbage Patch Dolls had a policy where you could send the doll back to them and they could see if they could repair your doll. Of course, there's a lot of other side companies that repair old toys and such, so they would also see if they could fix them. But if your doll was too wrecked or too destroyed or too far gone, they would end up sending your doll a death certificate. So that was only when your doll was like so far gone that you could not repair it. It was just broken. It was destroyed. That's when they end up throwing your doll away at the factory and then sending your doll a death certificate, which means there's no hope for your little doll no more. It's just gone. Imagine you're a child and that like doll was your world and you were like thinking it was getting sent to be repaired and then you just come home to the mail one day and you open up a death certificate letter about your doll being just dead. I feel like that would have traumatized me as a child. I would have been super upset. I never cared about dolls, but if that was a Webkinz, oh girl, that would have been a different story. <laughs> the next thing is also by far one of the creepiest things I've ever seen in my entire life, and I'm not being dramatic, okay? This next thing keeps me up at night and it's like a bad nightmare. So I guess some Cabbage Patch dolls are born in a land? They're actually born at Babyland General Hospital and they actually sprout and grow out of a real cabbage plant. And when I say it's terrifying, oh I mean it's terrifying. So Babyland actually is a toy collector's paradise because this place is where you can grow your own Cabbage Patch kid. And they actually have their head sprout outside of a real lettuce plant and I find it really strange and creepy. So kids would go to this place and actually watch their Cabbage Patch kid grow and sprout out of a magical forest and they get to take it home with them. I personally never would do that because just look at that. That's Is that not the most terrifying thing you've ever seen in your life? Like who would want that? I'm not trying to judge. If you guys like them, you do you boo boo, but that, no. I just hate vegetables and babies scare me, so that's a bad combination. <laughs> Last but not least, we're going to talk about some of the creepiest and scariest Cabbage Patch dolls that were ever designed to this day. So at one point, Cabbage Patch thought, huh, it might be a cool idea to release some Cabbage Patch dolls that actually look like famous celebrities. Personally, I would not want to see my face on a Cabbage Patch doll. I don't know, it's just something about them is not for me, but they made Ellen DeGeneres, they made Barack Obama, they made Marilyn Monroe, and a bunch of other celebrities into these dolls. And honestly, it's a little bit creepy in my opinion. Another really concerning doll that was released by Cabbage Patch was one that actually linked to an application on your iPhone. We all know that we've had some bad dolls that link to apps on your iPhone. Well, this one is just as terrifying. So basically this doll had electronic eyes that would be able to blink and move all on their own while connecting to a digital app where the doll could communicate with you and tell you how it was feeling and doing. This doll could eat, this doll could cry, this doll could burn, 
burp. This dog could even pee, which is pretty disgusting. But the biggest concern about how lifelike this doll was, was the eyes in particular. So some parents got concerned because this doll felt like it was a little too real in the factors that maybe some webcams were hidden inside of the doll's eye and could be watching their children. Which has also been a raised concern with tons of other toy dolls that were taken off the market and a lot of parents were not happy about this doll because they felt something was a little bit off. With that being said, a lot of parents ended up refusing to get the dolls for their kids and some parents ended up throwing the dolls away because they reported strange noises or movements of the eyes of these dolls at night when the doll was turned off or just sitting around and some weird suspicious things have happened with these Cabbage Patch dolls. I mean the name of these dolls were called Baby So Real and if that wasn't real enough that it literally would snore before it falls asleep, burp, pee, eat like a real baby child, I don't know what would be because that almost feels a little concerning for me too. Personally if my kid wanted a doll that was so realistic I would be a little creeped out and I'd probably end up buying them some other kind of remedy, maybe like, I don't know, a stuffed animal or something that's not as creepy as that. In conclusion today, we've learned that Cabbage Patch Kids have a really dark background and there's some really weird facts about them out there that I would have never known if it wasn't for the internet. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel a lot, guys. And we're getting so close to 2 million subscribers, so it would mean a lot if you guys would hit that subscribe button. Anyways, guys, it's been Lissy. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Be sure to check out my other videos if you guys want to watch some more scary videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys! So that was it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit the subscribe button, be sure to drop a like, and be sure to leave a comment down below. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.